Hi, and welcome to another podcast by Neatsphere Studios. And today what we're going to be looking at is modelling and the subject of modelling with the Edit Poly modifier. And what I thought it might be quite interesting to do is to do this over a series of podcasts. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the model that you see in front of you. We're going to make this gun. And I'm going to take you through on a step-by-step -step journey, as it were, as to how I created this model uh, and the techniques that I used in order to make it. So I guess the first thing we need to do um, is to decide sort of what our reference material is going to be for this model. And what I did is I went around, I was looking around and I found a rather interesting image. Uh, this is a cut down version of it. Now, this comes from the work of Mazumun Shiro. Uh, I apologise profusely if I've just pronounced your name incorrectly. Uh, and it was featured in his um, collection of ballistics work that he's done. And really, I was sort of looking through that and I saw this gun and I thought, hey, you know, that looks, that looks pretty cool. Why don't we try making that? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, and obviously, that was the result. So the first thing I really need to do is to go away and I need to get this as an image in the background of 3D Studio Max so that I can use it for reference. So let's put that to one side for the moment. And we've got 3D Studio Max open. Uh, my first thing that I need to do is to go to Customize and Unit Setups. Now because I'm in Europe, um, I work in metric. Uh, a lot of people will work in millimetres if you're in architecture, or some people will even work in metres. I find centimetres to be the best thing to work in. Um, it, it gives a nice balance, and my my poor simple brain can also get around centimetres and the numbers that are involved in working in centimetres. But we are also going to be working um, as much as possible to real-world scale. I realise with something like this that that's not always possible, um, but as much as possible you should always try and work in real-world scale. So we're going to pick the viewport that we want our image to appear in, and that's going to be uh, the front viewport. And in order to make it appear, I'm going to say Views, Viewport Background. And instead of Devices or Use Environment Background, I'm going to go straight to Files. And I know this happens to be on my desktop. There you go. You can see we've got a little preview. If I check this box, we have a little preview appear here. I click Open. And I want to do a couple of extra things here. The first thing I want to do is I want to say the aspect ratio of the image should match the bitmap and not the viewport that it's being viewed into. And I also want to lock the zoom and the pan. And this is quite important because it means that when I zoom in and out of my model, the background image that I'm using as my template will also zoom in and out as well. So I click OK and there we go. So I can maximize that viewport. And if I want to see a little bit better what I'm doing, I can press the G key. And we can now see we've got that in. And you see what I mean by about the zoom in and out? If I was to create, say, just a sphere here, just randomly, you can see that as I zoom in and out, uh, the bitmap stays with the same zoom aspect ratio as the sphere. So uh, what are we going to do first? Well. I guess the easiest thing that we can do first of all is going to be the gun sight up here at the top. Uh, that's going to be a pretty straightforward piece of, of work to produce first of all. So I guess that's where we're going to start. First thing I want to do really is just get this to fill up the viewport as much as possible. There we go. And from here, I'm going to go to shapes. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to create a line that's going to be half of the uh, the profile of this. And then I'm just going to revolve it round. And it's going to very, very quickly and very, very easily and simply make me my profile. So I'm going to select line. And the initial type of each vertex on the line is going to be a corner. And my drag type is also going to be corner. Now. What you can do later on is you can obviously go in and you can you can add extra points in and you can make bits not corner if you want to. And um, 
that's probably the best way to work, to be honest with you, rather than saying, oh, we're going to make it smoother, because you can get yourself into all sorts of problems. So I'm just going to start. I'm not going to worry about putting the chamfer on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of roughly line up my crosshair between um, this edge and, and that edge. Now, incidentally, there's a, there's a great trick that you can do as well. I can constrain how I'm moving my line by pressing the shift key. So here you can see it's constrained to the x-axis or the y-axis in 2D. And that's incredibly useful because I know that if I just place my cursor roughly on that line and I just click there and then I come all the way along. Now you can see there's a discrepancy here. So obviously somewhere there's been a step down and I reckon that step down happens about here. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to step down here. I'll come along a bit further. And I'll step down. Ooh, that's kind of a two-stage step down there, isn't it? So we're just clicking through. Um, all of these extra points you see here, we'll add the detail into those in a minute. And we're going to do that in a very clever way. Uh, but we'll do that at the polygon level rather than at the um, at the spline level, because otherwise it'll take up. It's just going to be too much bother, really, to be honest. OK, so there's our, our spline shape. Let's turn on G for the grid. And what that's going to help us do is just move these vertices so they're kind of in a an area that we can understand. We, we want them to, to pretty much be level. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no real way of sort of aligning, um, as you can see here with the tools, there's no way of aligning these vertices correctly. So it's not like with polygon tools where I just go, oh, I'll grab these two points and align them in the same Z plane or whatever. Um, this has to be a little bit more hand, no, it's a bit more random. Okay, so we've got all this roughly where we want it to be. And now I'm going to select these two vertices and by scrolling down. Incidentally, when you get the little hand on here, here's a top tip for you. When you get the hand, this can take a long time to kind of scroll through everything and it can be a real pain. If you hold down the control key while you've got your this little icon up, you just scroll backwards and forwards. It makes life a lot easier. So you scroll down, you get to the fillet. Now, with this tool, uh, as soon as I let go, it's accepted what I want. So do be very, very careful with it. You know, you get what you need, you let go, that's it. You've now created a fillet. So you have to be real careful with it sometimes. And I'm going to press X, I'm going to get rid of these um, handlebars up here. And do you remember I mentioned before I said I wanted to go in and, and sort of add some extra little fillety bits in? Well, that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to right click on these, select the two vertices, I'm going to right click on them. And from my quad menu, I'm going to make them both Bezier corner. And you'll notice here that I'm constrained now just to my Y axis by pressing F5, 6, 7, that's it, or F8. I can toggle my two axial constraints without having to, to use any of the buttons up here. So it's really useful when I just want to just do something like this, just to add a little bit of extra in there. See, that's really very nice and cool. So I think that's about ready now to do our revolve. I'm going to come out of that viewport. I'm going to maximize my perspective viewport. Uh, you can see we've got our spline here now in 3D. That's looking fine and dandy. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to add, now this is the bit where I get lost and I forget what I was doing. I'm going to add a lathe modifier onto that. And oh, look, completely the wrong angle. Let's just keep flipping around. Double check. Yep, that is indeed the Z. And we're going to have to monkey around with this a little bit. Joy, oh joy, joy. Let's grab the axis, shall we? Uh, first of all, under my modify, 
I guess what I want to do is I want to weld the core and flip the normal. So there we go, that's the first thing. And I want to press X so I bring up my spring again, and there we go. So that's beginning to start to look like our sniper sight. If I come back to my two views here, I'll just move my just drag this over here because Again, the problem that I'm having is I'm working at, at um, 1024 768 resolution. So um, this is for the purpose of the podcast, obviously, but it does mean that I have a right pain of a time working away. Now, you can see here, this isn't exact. Um, I, I really don't think at this stage with this kind of a sketch, it matters if it's particularly exact. If you are working from uh, set pieces and you're, and you're doing this and something has to be exact then obviously you have to work exactly I think for this example we're fine with what we've got here I don't really want to move the um, oh there we go it's just tripped out because of my mouse I don't think you have to worry too much about how accurate you are with it so I'm going to call a compromise I'm going to say that looks this looks pretty reasonable we're going to go with that so I'm happy with what I've got I now want to start adding on to that uh, with polygons. So I'm going to make sure that my rotational segments here are suitably high enough. And I think 24. I mean, there's two ways we can go. I can either put lots of polygons in around this, or I can put less polygons in. Say we have eight, a bit too few, 10. And then you put something like, at the end, you put a turbo smooth on. So if we just try this with a turbo smooth here. Um, maybe one or two iterations. It, you're kind of losing, I feel, some of the detail of what you wanted in there. So with my lathe, I'm actually going to up this and make it 32. Possibly 36. Possibly 42. Yeah, there we go. That'll do. I'm using a pretty fast computer today, so I can afford to have all the poly extra polygons in here. I'm going to right click on that now, and I'm going to convert it to an editable polygon. And the reason why we use edit polygon is because um, it really gives us a lot more tools, a lot better tools as well. So what I'm going to do now is I've taken up about 12 and a half, 13 minutes on this, on this part of the um, tutorial. I'm going to sign off this part now and I'm going to start straight away on part two so it'll pick up exactly where I left off. Um, yeah I suppose all you've got to do really now is download part two and if you like this visit my website www.neatsphere.com should be in the bottom right hand corner. Um, check us out, see what we've got, see if there's anything there that you like. Cheers.